this is the homework that you did on go formative. So, in order to make this plural, I would add an S. Now, on this one, I can't just add an ES because it, at, it has this accent on the last syllable, so I have to take that accent off. Cartas. This one, I can't just put the, the ES on the end because the Z changes to a C. This one, same thing. It has this accent here, so I have to get rid of that. This one, I can just add an S. Okay. These are the definite articles. L, los, la, las. What do they mean? The, the indefinite articles. Un, unos, una, and unas. What does it mean? A, an, and some. Now, some of you messed up on this part because it asks for the definite and indefinite article, and on the, the formative, it said to put a comma in between. So, I'm looking at this. This is masculine, and it's singular. So, I would put L, comma, un. This is feminine, singular. So, it would be la, comma, una. Ends in an AS, so that's feminine, and it's plural. So that would be las and unas. By the way, did you notice that these both live end in AS also? Problema, this is the one you have to be careful with. Remember, if they end in an MA, that it's actually masculine, and it's singular. So it would be L and un. And then this is a tricky one also. Manos, which means hands, is actually feminine and plural. So it would be las and unas. This one and this one are ones that you have to memorize. Okay. The conjugation of ser. Well, let's talk about this for a second. This means I. This box going straight across. This is the first person. This is the second person. Now this one you have to be careful with because these two are actually the third person where this actually is a part of the second person. But how it conjugates, it actually goes in this order. This two, this means you, but this means an informal. And if you notice, this side is singular. Everything singular on this side. This means he, she, this is you, and this is formal. It is not informal. It is formal. So the conjugation of yo would be soy. The conjugation of tu would be eres. The conjugation of all three of these is s. That is why the usted is down here, because it goes with how the third person conjugates. Over here, both of these mean we. Both of these mean you. Now, this is an informal plural. Now, sometimes instead of just saying you, I'll say you all or you guys, just so that you know that I'm talking about the plural version of it. And that also goes down here for ustedes when I do that. This is the plural side, boys and girls. There's more than one person. Okay, again, this is still first person. This is still second person. These two are still third person. This is second person, but it's formal second person. The conjugations of these. The nosotros form, that is a horrible S, is somos. This is sois. And these three are sewn. So now, 
Let's talk about the pronouns right here. I, well that's first person, that goes with this right here. So this is yo. He and I, the immediately, as it says I, that actually makes that a first person situation. That makes it a first person situation, so it's nosotros. The boys, it doesn't say I, it doesn't say you, so it makes this third person. It makes it third person and it makes it plural. So that would be ellos. Kim and Joel, again, third person, plural. There's at least one male in the group, so it's gonna be ellos. I'm gonna go backwards on this one. This has you. So that means that, and it's plural. So this is second person and it's plural. So on this one, because we have Wyatt, it doesn't seem like it's all that formal. It is either gonna be vosotros or ustedes. Now remember that Spain is what uses vosotros and I'm teaching you vosotros because if you ever read something that's in Old Spanish or from Spain or somebody who likes to use the vosotros form, you need to know the vosotros. The woman, that's singular by the way, this is third person and it's singular. Third person singular for a female is right here. It's ella. So this would be the ella. Princesa. Persesa is third person, and again, it's singular. So it would still be ella. Now, you, and it's formal. I didn't say it was singular or plural, so you could have usted or ustedes. But it's formal, so it needs to be the formal form. Okay, so when I write the telephone numbers, 22, comma, then I do the next number, 11, comma, remember, right here, I can't just say 5, because I still have this number right here, so I've got to say the 0, comma, and then the 5, right here, start with 16, which is 10, e Seis, comma, catorce, comma, veintiséis. Somebody asked about the accent marks. You just have to memorize which words have the accent marks and where those accent marks go. Oh, that's all we did for that one. Okay, K or to S, what time is it? Now you have to be careful when you're doing this, when we're talking about one o'clock, it's es la una. When we're talking about two to 12, it's son las. Okay, and then you put what the number is. If you're talking about minutes from one minute to 30 minutes, you would put an E and then the minutes. Okay, if you're talking about 31 through 59, you would put menos and then the minutes. Okay? Also, if it has at in the sentence, you are going to say, you would say es a, and then you put the time without the son or the s. So here we go. It is 2.30. Son las dos. Now, remember on this one, I could have one of two things. I like to use media because that's how I grew up doing it. But if you put 30, I would be okay with that. Either one of those two would go there. De la tarde. 
I'm not actually going to go down like this just because you can still see what's above it. Okay, this is a one o'clock hour, so that means I'm going to use one. Es la una y because I'm after one o'clock but before one thirty. Cinco and it's a.m. de la mañana. Now this next one, this one says at. It is, boys and girls, is S. This says at, so I have to put a. Ah. Then this says 11, 16. So I say las 11 y 16 de la mañana. Okay, this is the form that you're going to use when it says at. Okay, it is at. Es la, nope, es a, oh, I can't even do this today. Es a las. Now, this is, it's after 30 minutes. So that means I need to change this to the next hour. So seis. And then I have to subtract time. So that would be 12 minutes. Menos doce de la... Now, on this one, I would actually probably do noche. But because it's right around 6 o'clock, some people still think that's afternoon. So I would accept afternoon. But you could also do noche. Because sometimes that time of day, if it's winter time, it's dark outside. Okay, so let's do this one. Let's do this column. There's nothing that says at. So I just write it. It is. Son las cuatro. Y now this is another one with 15 minutes that you could write it one of two ways. You could either write that as cuarto, which I would write. Notice where the R is in those two words. Or you could write quince. For a long time I didn't allow that. De la mañana. This next one doesn't say at in it. So I just go with son las Siete y diecisiete de la... Now, this is after 7 o'clock. I'm going to actually put noche. Now, on this one, it says at. So, I need to do es a las... Now, this is after 30, so I need to write it as the next hour, which is ocho. And I take away time, menos, and that would be 25 minutes. 25, oops, 25 de la noche. It is at, so es a la, sorry, the next hour would be once. Menos dos de la noche. De la noche, most of you've gotten down. We're, we're pretty good with that. Okay. This next one right here. It is. There's no at involved. So son las nueve. Oops, nueve, not nueve. Okay, now, because it's right on the dot, you could put in punto, which is perfectly fine. De la noche. You don't have to have the in punto, but some people like to put the in punto. Okay, there's no at on this. Oh, I wanted to leave it so you can see it. Okay, it's between the hour or the minutes of 1 to 30. 
So I'm going to say son las nueve y veintidós de la noche. At. So I've got to do at. So S A. Now, the next hour for this one is going to be one. So I need to say es a la una menos veintidós de la mañana. Okay, because it's after 30 minutes, that means this number goes up to one. Okay, we've got an at. S, A. Now, this is after 30 minutes, so this number goes up to the next number. S, A, las dos. Menos. Veintinueve. Okay, and that's in the morning, de la mañana. Okay, so now we're going to answer some questions, I believe. ¿Cómo te llamas? Right here, it tells you what verb you're going to use. Some of you guys tried to change this to ser and whatever. The answer to this is me llamo. And then I keep writing it like this. You're filling in the blank with whatever your name is. Okay? I would fill that with Kim because that's my first name. When you answer como te llamas, you're answering it me llamo and then you put what your name is. Anytime you say como se dice, you just write se dice. And then what is good night? Be careful, boys and girls. Some of you are getting this wrong. Because right here you're putting OS instead of AS. Se dice buenas noches. Okay, on this one, se llama. All you have to do is put Isabel. On this one, it already gives you your verb. So you say, se llaman Raúl y Alejandro. Now this is asking, what is the capital of Uruguay? Well, the subject of the sentence is this whole thing right here. La capital, you don't even have to figure out what, how to write it because it's already given to you. The capital of Uruguay, what's the verb? The verb is right there, S, and then you fill in the blank, Monte Video. This, by the way, oh, let me rewrite it because that looks horrible. That looks better. De donde eres? From where are you? You have to answer this in where you're from. Now, you can either write yo soy or de and then fill in where you're actually from or you can just write soy de and I'll explain why you can do that later on. But for right now, just know that you can write it either way. De donde es Isabel? From where is Isabel? Isabel is from. So you would write Isabel is. Well, it gives you the verb. You have to say from. And then some of you, the hardest part on this was spelling Guatemala correctly. Got to spell Guatemala correctly. Now, I did teach you how to answer this one in a complete sentence. But if you just wrote bien or muy bien, or no muy bien, 
regular. I would have been okay with that. But really, you're supposed to put a stoy and then put one of those. But that's next chapter. Some of you are stuck on this one. Guys, why didn't you just ask me? You just have to ask and I'll tell you. So what is the subject of the sentence? The subject of the sentence is La Señorita Grambois. And why this is capitalized? I don't know. It should not be capitalized. La Señorita. Or if you wrote it, now this one, when you do the, the abbreviation, it is capitalized. Grambois. Oops, that was weird. I don't know how to spell. S de Kansas City. Now, if you put Los Estados Unidos, I was fine with that. If you put Kansas, I was fine with that. But some of you tried to put America. Guys, America is the whole North America, South America, and Central America continent. You can't just say America. Que hora es? Then I look on what time you have written down. So I can't answer this one. So whatever time you wrote, the, the time I can see.